modus ponens, uh, in modus ponens between A and B that I just discussed, and this is a sequential or a temporal co connection, we can incorporate the same format because modus ponens and modus tollens are exactly the same with respect to the first line of the inference rule. Modus tollens says if A then B. Modus ponens, if you remember, and you should start to commit these to memory, the way that I always committed when I first started was to keep my little silly relationship. It was the simplest thing. If I jump, I will fall, right? That You can't forget that, right? If I jump, I fall, I jump, I fall, right? So it's exactly the same, right? Modus tollens says if A happens, then B happens. And modus ponens says if A happens, then B happens. We recognize prima facie that the redundancy in that logical relationship, the conditional between A and B, means that we can connect these two. These two concepts are we can, the, these two concepts have enough in common, being the conditional connection between A and B, that we can link, we can borrow aspects of that argument and appropriate it to this argument because it's exact. We're going to make appropriations now using exactly the same initial line that we use for modus ponens. Okay. Again, all of this, it, it, some of this will require you know a, a bit of a bit of practice on your part. I've been practicing for a decade or more. Um, if this is your first time watching it, just just absorb the information. You'll eventually see where all of this is headed, right? So incorporate the same format because modus ponens and modus tollens are exactly the same with respect to the first line of the inference rule. This fact allows us to link sort of my way of thinking it, right? It's this fact allows us to link the two. So synopsis of step one in linking. Ask yourself, bottom of page four, ask yourself what are the structural similarities between two different rules of inference, right? Look at one rule of inference. If you're really, really comfortable with, with modus ponens because it's a super simple rule of inference. If A, then B, A, therefore B. If A, then B, A, therefore B. It's simple, right? If I jump, I fall, I jump, I fall. And you're comfortable with that rule, but you're not so comfortable yet with this rule. Wait until we get to another rule and try and link those things, right? So what it is, it's intuitive. I, I'm really comfortable with the use of this rule of inference, and I'm really, really comfortable with the use of this inf rule of inference. How can I possibly connect the two? The last rule of inference will be exactly that, show you the ultimate means of connecting. Uh, and then you can just build, and it, it'll get, by the time we get to the, the, the fifth rule of inference, you can infinitely complicate this if you want. Okay. Identify at which, top of page five, identify at which point in the argument those rules were used to incorporate that logical similarity as a rhetorical link binding the two sections, right? So we're going to use rules of inference to bind the two sections. Section one and section two will be bound logically, and then what we'll do is we'll see, remember, we're starting with the logic first and always, and what you'll see is that we'll start to develop um, the, the narrative from the conceptual link in the logic. So step two in linking, identify the points, and uh, this is going to be very, very simple. So the previous argument again, modus ponens if a then b. So if this is what we this is what we had, right? If in the last section, if you water your grass during a drought by using a water hose or water from your faucet, which pulls water from the water tablet, all of that was our antecedent. Then you place added strain on the water table because the water used to water the grass is derived from the water table. Okay, cool. Pretty simple, right? The argument is. It's solid. You know, this is introductory, so I'm not going to refine the argument and have it all nice and shiny with nice, nice, uh, you know, words. More important than the words of the logic, but that's, that's a solid statement, right? It's an association between water conservation and the amount of water that's in a hole <laughs> or in the ground, right? That's basically what that is. So to begin linking modus ponens with modus tollens, we recognize, as you see, that the conditional relationship between A and B are exactly the same. A and B for modus ponens, A and B, or I should be technical, if A then B for modus ponens, if A then B for modus tollens. So you, obviously, in writing a paper, are not going to type the same paragraph twice. Intuitively, that doesn't make sense. I'm not saying to take the, the quote from above from, that we were able to construct 
from our last section, section one, right? All of this quote from above, from the word if to the word, uh, I have to change it from water tablet to water table, is a representation of that line in modus ponens. I'm not saying to do that line twice, obviously. That wouldn't make sense to write that in a sentence or in a paragraph twice, right? So you have to dig deeper to assess more of the connection. There are many ways to approach this. Again, this is an intuitive approach, so it depends on what catches your eye. I see the phrase derived from. So in the beginning, and I'll go back to highlight this, right in the notes, I'm gonna bold that and make it red. I see above, from, the, from this quote above, this initial quote, if the water, if you use water to water your grass, what jumped out at me, remember we're trying to link, so I need to find concepts in our previous argument that we've constructed to develop or unflesh. That's the whole process of it, right? It's, here's the initial argument. The logic is taking the argument somewhere that I didn't expect it to go, which we saw when I was talking and citing from the ne Nebraska Environmental Quality Association or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I find something, one unique point in the last section, and I unpack it in this new section and allow the logic to help me unpack it. I arrive at something new because of unpacking it. I go back and I look at the section that I just created and look for points that could be further unpacked. I find a point that can be unpacked. I pull it out of that section. I put it in a new section. I use logic to help me unpack it. It derives something new and on and on and on. This is the process. This is the system, right? This is how it, this is how, this is how this works, right? So, um, what caught my eye was derived from because this really establishes a relationship which I could further expand or unpack. So look at the logic. Granted, this is a very difficult part, and I do recognize that this is a difficult part, so let me just pause for a bit so that you see this, right? Because a lot of, we haven't even really started yet, but a lot of this is conceptually to get your mind prepared for what's going on. I want you to understand before I just start throwing up stuff what's going on. So visually, it looks a little bit like this, right? We have the initial the initial uh, argument. And let's just say it's a paragraph, and the paragraph is this. Part of the paragraph stands out to you, whatever that part is. This part of the paragraph, so you have blah, 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 blah. This part stands out. You pull this part of the argument out, right? Logic is going to inform this, right? You're going to appropriate logic to form and condition this argument to begin with. So the first step is to select the logical rule of inference you want to use. The second step is to appropriate that rule in the construction of the argument. The third, so the appropriation would be this. The third step is to find something within the argument that can be further expanded or unpacked, right? So you take this new point and you want to further expand, right? So this would be expand. And we'll put to be expanded. To be expanded, you find something that you want to further expand. Once you've isolated this thing to be expanded, you go back to the logic. You find a rule that will help you expand it. You appropriate that rule to this concept. The appropriation of that rule to this concept develops in a new paragraph. In that new paragraph, you will undeniably arrive at a new point. You pull that point out. That point needs to be expanded. You go to another rule of logic. You appropriate that rule of logic to construct and frame, and that invariably rides at another paragraph, and you link all of these paragraphs together. Next thing you know, you got a paper, you got a book, you got an essay, you got, that's what we're doing. That's what this is. That's what this is, right? That's exactly, visually, what we're doing. So the reason why I put it on the board, and I want you to see it, is because it might help condition your mind in which, okay, I see what he's doing, because I know what I'm doing is not I mean, it is intuitive, but it's a very bizarre way of approaching, sort of non-traditional way of approaching, um, approaching logic, right? So, the idea always, again, is to not be afraid to step outside of the box, right? To try something new. It's funny. 
the uh, and I want to get back to this in a second because we're like 